Hello, welcome to Trophy TV. It is the match preview. Everton versus Wolves at Goodison Park in a must-win game, James. I mean, obviously, Wolves are struggling as well. Yeah. Um, they're two points behind Everton at the moment, but Everton have, you know, just two wins all season for both clubs yeah. uh, isn't good enough. But for Everton being the home side, haven't scored a goal in November, went the whole November without scoring yeah, a goal. It's terrible. Didn't start December very well with that 4 0 defeat at Manchester United. So, this one, as difficult of a game as it will be, yeah. it's an absolute must win for Everton. Yeah, because you sort of know that at the end of the season, it's going to be these two clubs near the bottom. So, feels like that, yeah. Well, you don't want it to be that, but mm. unfortunately, that's what it's going to be. Mm. So, I think it's a must win for both teams, really. I think Wolves are going to be up for it too, because. He did start to get into a bit of form, mm. but then obviously the defeat against Bournemouth's not been ideal for them. So they want to bounce back against Everton, who were known for not scoring. So, yeah, it is mad. Wolves have scored more than double the amount yeah. of goals Everton have scored, which is a bit a bit worrying. Um, and despite conceding like fours and six at times this season, they've got a better goal difference than Everton, <laughs> which sort of tells you where Everton are up to. I mean, from an Everton perspective, mm. what does the manager do? Because it's like on Sunday, Everton started the game quite well. Really, it was yeah. it was an, it was an okay performance up to a point. But the minute we conceded the goal, yeah, it, everything went. And the, the, the some of the I mean, all of the goals you can question really. Yeah. But um, like, what does he do? What would you do if you dates? Would you? Are you sticking with one up front? So you're trying two? Are you trying to mix it up? Or yeah. are you just? Do you think he'll just keep doing the things he's done because he'll believe that it'll change at some stage? Well, I think a lot we spoke about a lot on this channel is that Everton haven't really been attacking as a unit. Mm. And I think for the first time probably in a while against Man United, they did attack as a unit and they were mm. pressing for that like first half an hour, which was like a pleasant, pleasant surprise. Mm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And there was a few good chances that we once again didn't capitalize on. So I think for me, the reason why we weren't able to capitalize it was that last bit of quality. So whether mm. it was one pass that didn't go through or, you know, a shot that wasn't on target or whatever. That was sort of what hurt Everton in the end. Mm -hmm. So I think it's, whether it's changing the personnel, but keeping sort of the tax the same that everyone pushes, using like a man guard who's, who's better at passing or whatever. Mm -hmm. And I think that's sort of what you've got to do, but keep the same sort of mentality that we had in that first half an hour. And I think it will come good because you've seen with Bournemouth against, I mean, with Wolves against Bournemouth, he had three penalties mm. and then it was like sort of the defence had no confidence and the keeper gave away two of them. So mm. it's like if you'd attack as a unit and everyone goes for it themselves, put the pressure on them instead of the pressure being on us, then I don't see why we, we didn't have a chance because Beto, Beto certainly can score for us. We just haven't done that though, have we, this season? Yeah. You know, okay, it was brighter at United, but even if you look at the chances at United, we still didn't commit loads of plays no. forward. It was... Well, I mean, both teams can see the four at the weekend and both teams were self-inflicted. Yeah. Everton was the worst offensive performance I've seen for a long time. They were absolutely diabolical, all of them. Yeah. They were terrible. Um, you know, Jared Brantwaite, the first two goals. Okay, the first one may well creep in anyway. Yeah. But sticking your leg out in the six-yard box yeah. <laughs> never really ends well. Uh, the second one was pathetic by him, really, being dispossessed there and, and it was a tap-in. Then the third and fourth, I mean, Tarkovsky for the fourth goal, crikey. I mean, why Michalenko passed it back in the first place, yeah. I don't know. Um, and then Wolves, and you look at the goals Wolves conceded, I mean, really bad goals, yeah, really bad. like to give penalties away. Um, so both teams, yeah, both teams had a bit of a nightmare on Saturday, uh, over the weekend in terms of defensively. From an Everton perspective, though, we haven't, at home, we haven't created any no. kind of uh, attack and momentum at any time. And you're right, I think the only sort of way that Everton win this game yeah. will be trying to get on the front foot and, and push Wolves back. Because, you know, like we said, the defensive, defensively, they are a bit, you know, frail. If you look at the, they've conceded a lot of goals, but they have got real good attacking players. And if you Everton allow Wolves to have the ball yeah. the way they've allowed every other team to have the ball this season, then this will be another game where we're relying on a set piece or something yeah. and we're not even doing them very well now so you know everything 
I've seen something this morning. I have it in the bottom there. You have so many things in yeah, like the metrics. Yeah, When you look at it, right, and yeah. possession and, and all of that stuff. We've got to be better, and we've got to get on the front foot, and this is the game to do it. Absolutely. Well. <laughs> no, but that, I, yeah. I, know, I know I can see it in your face, but, you know, it's Liverpool at the weekend, and they've yeah. beaten everyone. Yeah. So, you can't... I know derby matches, anything can happen in a derby match. Proof that last season, but got to create a little bit of momentum and the home games against teams who were around yet they're the ones that can get you out of trouble and you know we just haven't done it you know Brentford came last week had a man sent off and we didn't we didn't press home in the advantage Wolves are going to come and you know Mateus Cunha they've got Stan Larson you yeah. know just a couple of their players who can create things they're attacking players and if Everton don't get tight to them and, and force them on the back foot yeah. You're just hoping that they have an off day, and I'm not convinced you win games of football hoping the opposition have an off day. You've got to, you've got to make Force them it out of it, exactly. Yeah. And you know, Wolves are the below us. They're not a great side flowing with confidence. Yeah. They might feel like they should have had more points, but we could argue the same. But it's about actually going and getting the points, isn't it? And yeah, one right. win at home all season is pretty poor, isn't it? Yeah, it's just. It just the Brentford game as well it's just I did sort of having that plan B to just go at them sort of which is which wasn't there no and so you look at the the Wolves game and you hope that maybe they thought of a plan B now but I think there definitely was pos positive signs at that first half an hour but we still lost 4-0 game lost 90 odd minutes yeah we still half lost 4-0 so yeah, exactly it's just that's the scary bit let's have a look at um Wolves is the team that Wolves played last time out against uh, Bournemouth at the weekend. There you go. So they had Josie Shard and Gold, Shamedo, Lamina, Gomez, uh, Antinori, then they had Andre, Jao Gomez in midfield, uh, Belgrade, Cunha, Rodrigo, go got lots of Gomez, haven't he? <laughs> and Stan Larson up front in a 4 2 3 1. And I think Shay scoring lots of goals. Yeah. Uh, Everton are going to have to be. Evan are going to have to be defensively very good mm -hmm. to uh, you know get back on it which we weren't at the weekend we were really poor at the weekend and that'll have to change do you think he'll make any changes to the back four because obviously we saw Nathan Patterson come on he's done alright actually yeah. um, but ja James Tarkovsky had an absolute nightmare and Jake O'Brien of course came on late on for him and I just wonder whether the manager will be tempted to mm. make a change in the back four. Michalenko struggled as well. Yeah, Michalenko was a worry because mm. it felt like everything was coming from that left yeah, side. Yeah. And even before they scored, there was a few warnings that like mm. that was going to happen. The same with the Southampton game where it was all coming from the left side mm. and then they eventually put the ball across and scored. So I think something does have to change. And for me personally, I would start Patterson because I feel like when he came on, you know, he had a few good crosses and there was that chance that Calvin Luna had towards the end, which, you know... Mm. He overlapped his wing across the ball, in which mm. is something you know we haven't really seen in a while. We didn't think you were allowed. Yeah, your fullbacks were allowed to go forward. So I think for me, that, that's something definitely that should happen. But for Tarkowski and Brantwaite, I feel like you've got to sort of stick with them now. Mm. As much as I would like to see Jake O'Brien get a few like games in Ever for Everton, mm. I think it's a bit of a risk throwing him in a game when it is so crucial. And I feel like both Tarkowski and Brantwaite got a bit of a bit of credit. In the bank, whatever, and that oh, they yeah. have been there to save us for a I'm while. I'm just wondering if Tark, because Tarkovsky has been playing with an injury all season. Yeah. He sort of said that, and he came off. You know, that's I think I'm right in saying he played every minute of every Premier he League came game. Off once, whatever, didn't he? come off, he injury. got forced off at Sheffield United yeah. and injury time that for about 15 that. seconds. Apart from that, yeah, he yeah. played every minute, and he was off early yesterday. You know, relatively speaking, wasn't he? And O'Brien come on. So I'm just wondering whether his injuries, because he did look, he struggled yesterday. He yeah, really he did. He really did struggle against United. I'm just wondering if if that'll be something the manager looks, especially with obviously having Liverpool at the weekend. You know, big games coming up. Mm -hmm. um, but no, he may he, he may well just do what he's done. Uh, we have identified Matthias Cunha as Wolves as danger. I think you've got a few, but he is the one. He's having a great season so far. So let's have a look at his numbers. There we go. 13 games played as seven goals he scored from an XG of 3.24. He's also got three assists and created nine big chances in his heat map. 
He's absolutely everywhere. He's all over the pitch. Uh, he's been in sensational form for Wolves this season, and he's got, he's won especially because he he floats between yeah. the lines, and he's so dangerous. Travels brilliantly with the ball, carries the ball fantastically well, can shoot from distance. Yeah. He's going to be one Everton have to watch out for. Absolutely, he's been key to their attacks recently. Mm. I mean, he didn't have the, the greatest game against Bournemouth, but mm. the game before that, he was... Full on my way with yeah. that goal, the first touch and the long pass and the finish was yeah. absolutely sensational. So, he is a good player. Um, from an Everton perspective, we have just talked about what we uh, what we might do. Let's have a look at Everton's team that lined up at Old Trafford. So, there you go. Obviously, Ashley Young, James Tarkovsky, Brantwaite, Michalenko. It's midfield two at the core, and Adrissa Garner Gay. And ahead of them, Jesper Linson, Dwight McNeil, Illiman and Jai and Beto. So, uh, I mean, are you think Everton will be the same sort of 4 2 3 1 match Wolves? And Yeah, definitely. I think they'll stay. And do you think there's a case for maybe Mangala coming in for the core in midfield? I think there was a few times against Man United where it was just that, that final ball, that final pass was mm. just a bit off. And it cost us maybe one or two potential goals or mm. big chances. So I think you need someone like Mangala, you know, he's bit more calmer on the ball and mm. can get them passes off. Yeah, yeah. So I think for me, it's not fast to come in because gay and decor can sometimes be a bit chaotic. And where it can be good, mm. I think when you just need that final ball, they're not yeah. really the people for it. So it's for me. Mangala then. Interesting, interesting. Well, we'll see, won't we? It's a big week for Everton. It started off terribly at Old Trafford. This is a really, you know, this is a dangerous game for Everton and these are the good sides. So, you know, but again, like I've said before, it, it's an opportunity for Everton to beat a team that is below them and, and give you know put a, create a little bit of a gap. We've got big tough games yeah. in December and going into January, and if we're not very careful, we're going to be in the bottom three and and in real real trouble and in need of a huge second half of the season. We are anyway, but it's going to be you know even bigger even bigger unless we uh, we start getting some wins together and it's. You know, with, let's hope it starts on Wednesday against Wolves. Let us know what you think in the comments section below. Can the Toffees beat Wolves on Wednesday night? Uh, what changes would you like to see before that game? That's it from me and James. Make sure you like, subscribe, do all that. See you later.